it's hard to regulate your appetite. You're kind of a victim of your biology. How do you actually learn how to use science, not willpower, to control hunger and appetite? So hormones are important. Right? What are hormones? Basically, they're the messenger molecules in your body. They regulate so many functions. We know about your pituitary, your hypothalamus hormones, your thyroid, your adrenals, your sex hormones. There's so many hormones, right? So how do they work? There's also hormones you've probably never heard of, <laughs> which are ones we're going to talk about today, uh, particularly ghrelin or ghrelin, however people say it, or lep and leptin. Uh, and these regulate our appetite. So they coordinate many, many functions in the body from metabolism to sexual function, your circadian rhythms, stress, mood, everything else. They're basically chemical messengers. And these messengers play a big role when it comes to food, specifically uh, regulating when and how much we eat. Uh, now, most of us uh, live in countries with staggering rates of obesity. There's now over 2 billion people in the world who are overweight. In America, it's normal to be overweight. 75% of us are overweight, 42% are obese. And uh, it, it's important to understand what's going on because it's not because people want to be fat, right? Nobody's like, hey, I want to gain weight. I want to like, you know, be chubby. I want to be 300 pounds. Nobody is saying that. Nobody wants that. But people are victims of an environment that is driving their hormones in the wrong direction that makes them unable to regulate their appetite and their hunger. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about leptin and ghrelin, two hormones you may not have heard about, but that have a direct impact on your appetite and the regulation of your body weight and fat. And so let's get into it. Now, leptin and ghrelin are two of the most important hormones that control your appetite. They affect your sense of fullness and hunger, uh, and they're pr pretty new. I mean, they were only discovered after I graduated from medical school uh, in the 90s. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> so uh, while there's a lot to learn about them, and we're still learning so much about appetite, uh, scientists have unlocked some of the secrets of these appetite-regulating hormones. So what's ghrelin? Start there. Ghrelin is made in your stomach. Now, there's hormones that are made all over, but ghrelin is a hormone made in your stomach, and it signals that you're hungry. It's the hunger hormone, and it also helps you store fat. So it also plays a role in sugar metabolism, glucose metabolism, and regulating your energy, and many other things. Now, when your stomach is empty and you're hungry, it releases ghrelin, which uh, means that it's highest before you eat and lowest after you finish eating, which is normal, right? Now, what about leptin? Leptin is actually the satiety hormone. It's the feeling full hormone. It's what tells your body to stop eating. Now, we're going to talk about why this hormone is so dysregulated and not working in our society and why people, despite high levels of leptin, which are supposed to tell you to stop eating, don't work, right? But when it's working properly, it helps regulate your body weight long-term by sending, sending signals to your brain uh, when you've eaten enough and it letting them know you're full so you're not going to keep you know, down on that bag of potato chips. Now, if your body has high levels of leptin, your brain recognizes that you're plenty of stored food and stored fat, and it basically says, I'm not hungry and I'm full. Uh, but if you have low leptin levels, your brain thinks maybe you need to store more fat and it signals that you probably should be eating. So it's kind of really in regulating an appetite and weight and metabolism. Now, you can think of leptin and ghrelin as sort of two sides of the same coin. One side, ghrelin triggers hunger and lets you know when it's time to eat, while the other side, leptin, tells your body when you've had enough and when you need to stop. Now, what happens when these hormones are out of whack, which is pretty much for the majority of people in America and increasingly around the world. Uh, so it's Im Im important to understand when these hormones go out of whack, you get into trouble. So let's start with ghrelin. You know, people who are overweight tend to eat more because their appetite's dysregulated. And there are many reasons for that, but we typically see higher levels of ghrelin in people who are hungrier. And if your ghrelins are not regulated well, then you're in trouble. For one of the things, for example, that we found is that people who don't sleep enough, which is majority of Americans are sleep deprived, uh, and they're sleeping six or seven hours instead of eight or nine hours, which our bodies need. And they did a study with young college uh, students where they basically took uh, one group and they kind of got them normal sleep schedule. Another group, they sleep deprived them. Uh, every night for a while. And the ones that were sleep deprived had higher levels of ghrelin 
they were hungrier and they crave more carbs and sugar. So if you're having ghrelin level problems and your ghrelin's high, you're going to actually eat more carbs and sugar. So really that needs to be regulated. So make sure you get enough sleep and there's, there's a lot of other tricks that are gonna talk about how to regulate this. Now, the other issue is, is leptin. Now, most of the time, if you're healthy, leptin levels, you know, will go up when you finish a meal and then they'll go down. What happens is when people have uh, inflammation, when they start putting on visceral fat or belly fat, which is basically like a fire in your belly, it's, it produces things called adipose cytokines, which are inflammatory cytokines that are produced by your fat cells. They're not just holding up your pants. They produce hormones, neurotransmitters, and cytokines. Cytokines we heard about from COVID, which are inflammatory molecules that, that go throughout your body and create havoc. And they actually create havoc even in your brain and they lead to leptin resistance. And resistance to leptin means you make more and more leptin, but it doesn't actually work. And so you'll see a lot of obese people with high levels of leptin, which gives you a clue that they have inflammation and leptin resistance and you have to address the inflammation. So basically when, you're, when your body uh, is, is, is having leptin resistance, you don't get that feeling of being full, even though your leptin's high, your brain thinks you don't have enough fat reserves, which you do if you're obese, <laughs> and it causes you to kind of think you're starving, it decreases your energy level, lowers your metabolic rate, and it makes you have more weight gain. So it's kind of a double whammy. You really need to understand what's driving leptin resistance. A friend of mine, uh, Leo Gallen, one of the great functional medicine doctors, wrote a book about leptin resistance, which I encourage you to check out if you're interested in this topic. And we'll put a link in the show notes to that book. All right, so let's put it together and uh, talk about what to do when your hormones are out of whack and your appetite's dysregulated. Because I, I always say to people, look, it's not your fault you're overweight. There's something going on here. It's not about willpower and white knuckling your way through just you know restricting calories and exercising more and eating less. It's just not how your metabolism works. No, no, nobody's trying to gain weight. And so what's going on here is something that's dysregulating our biology. And there are many things that do it. It could be our microbiome, it could be inflammation, it could be toxins, it could be pesticides, it could be heavy metals, it could be even infections, viruses can be linked to inflammation. So anything that drives inflammation will cause weight gain and dysregulate your metabolism. Uh, and it's something that can be addressed and fixed. So when you have imbalances in these hormones, you have dysregulated appetite and you don't actually feel full. So you tend to be hungrier more and not feel full regardless of whether you're eating. And that has huge adverse effects, which makes you gain weight. Uh, and then of course, if you're doing that, you're gonna see higher levels of blood sugar, higher levels of insulin, you'll get prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, you'll even you dysregulate your sleep cycles and circadian rhythms, melatonin signaling, and it's a vicious cycle. So you get you know more dysregulation. It's like feeds, it's a feed forward negative cycle. So how do you keep your ghrelin and leptin levels balanced? What do you do? Well, there are hormones that are naturally produced, but um, you know, we don't have a particular supplement or food that's going to do it, but there's a number of strategies that actually can help reduce inflammation in the body, that can help regulate your appetite, and that make a huge difference. And there's much research on this. First is, again, not, not rocket science, but eat real food. Get rid of all the ultra-processed food. We know, for example, from uh, Kevin Hall's NIE study, where he gave people unlimited amounts of ultra-processed food, crossover study, another uh, part of the study gave them unlimited amounts of whole real food. And uh, the people who were eating the ultra processed food at the time ate 500 calories more a day. That means basically their appetites were dysregulated. They weren't feeling full and they were eating all this industrial processed food that was driving imbalances in their hormones. So studies show that also high levels of now, fructose are a problem. Um, fructose is often found in soda, right? And, and juice and fruit. Fruit is okay, but when you're having high fructose corn syrup, it's driving huge amounts of leptin resistance, which makes you not feel full, it makes you eat more. Um, and, all, you know, pretty much any kind of sugary stuff will do the same thing. And when you have high levels of, of fructose, sugary uh, beverages, or simple carbs like refined starch, it also impairs your ghrelin response. So your, your appetite doesn't go down, you don't feel full, and then you kind of, you know, get in this vicious cycle. So eat real whole foods as close to nature as possible. Stuff that I've talked about in my book, Food, What the Heck Should I Eat? and The Pegan Diet. I, also, another trick is don't eat at night. We should not be eating at night for a whole host of reasons, but don't eat within three to four hours of bed. I heard a guy the other day talking, he, he leaves eight hours between his last meal and bedtime so he can actually sleep better. So 
uh, you know, I, I think that's hard, but you should not use your refrigerator as a nightlight. <laughs> and uh, a Harvard study found that nighttime eating had profound effects on hunger and, and the appetite regulating hormones, leptin and ghrelin. In fact, uh, leptin levels decreased for 24 hours after indulging in a late night snack, which basically means your appetite control break, the break on your appetite was turned off. So you basically have no breaks for 24 hours if you eat late at night. So you're going to eat more the next day. You're going to want to be hungrier. Again, vicious cycle. Next is protein. Protein is so key. It's the most important macronutrient. It suppresses ghrelin so you don't feel hungry. And, uh, and of course, you know this. When you eat protein, you feel full longer. When you eat fat, you feel full longer. So add high quality protein. I like regenerative raised uh, animals like uh, pasture raised chicken, regenerative raised beef, bison, elk. You can go to forceofnature.com. You can get grass fed meats from lots of different places. I, I talked about this again, where you can find these on my book. We'll put in the show notes. Uh, stay active. Being, being uh, active and exercising helps improve leptin sensitivity. So whatever leptin you have, it'll work better, meaning it'll shut down your appetite. So HIIT training, high intensity interval training really regulates leptin, which is, you know, when you kind of uh, sprint, right? You go for 30, 45, 50 seconds uh, full out, like you're running from a tiger and then three minutes kind of walk. So you can do it on a treadmill, you can do it running, you can do it on a bike, but it's really powerful. Uh, you know, exercise pretty much is a wonder drug. Also sleep, like I said, if you don't sleep, you're going to be hungrier. You're going to shut, um, uh, uh, you know, down the, the regulatory system and you're going to have higher levels of ghrelin, lower leptin. Um, and, uh, and just getting far asleep on back to back nights had huge disruptions in, uh, uh, leptin and ghrelin. And I, I know this, if I don't sleep or for example, I, you know, fly, uh, you know, across the world somewhere and I come back and I haven't slept for a long time. Like all I want to do is eat carbs. All I want is sugar. All I want is ice cream. You know, it's like, I know better. Right. But my body is telling me, find that bagel, find the pasta, find the ice cream, you know, like that's kind of what's going on. So make sure you're getting up to sleep, really, really important. And also stress, you know, we have to learn how to regulate and manage stress. None of us can avoid stress, but we have to become masters at regulating our, our nervous system. And we have an on and off switch, right? The on is the sympathetic go, 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 stress response. And the parasympathetic is the off switch. It's a deep relaxation. It can be breath work. It can be yoga, meditation massage, you know, guided imagery, sound healing, whatever works for you, uh, do it. <laughs> it's it's got to be an active process. Uh, research shows that cortisol, which is the stress hormone, has a big impact on leptin production. So it'll lower leptin production, meaning you won't feel full. Again, stress makes you hungry. When you look at people who are stressed, they want to eat more carbs. They want to eat more sugar. They want to eat to soothe. They call it stress eating. It's a thing, right? It's not because you're a bad person or if you have no willpower. It's because you're a victim of hormone dysregulation. So the key thing to understand is it's not your fault. Your hormones are out of whack and there's a way to reset them. And uh, this is a lot of what my work is about. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. How do you know if you have fatty liver? Well, sometimes you can get your blood test when you go to your doctor and get your liver test done, but they're typically going to be normal, even if you have a fatty liver, unless it's really, really bad. 